Scream Bravo, also if you didn't know, this is called the show. Hi everybody, it's Paul from Gold Gauntlet Comics. Uh, there's certainly some good news to report today. They've adjusted the track, so Dorian's going to go out and more into the Atlantic, it looks like. Unfortunately, that may be bad news for Georgia or South Carolina. As predicted, they're talking about becoming a five. Uh, following is the Weather Channel clip that I recorded to give you a summary. Uh, here's your wind speed probabilities. Be right back. Model, many of the other global models, the hurricane models as well, to move these tracks more off to the east here. And so you see that many of the members are now showing an offshore track and that curves around uh, much like the coastline. So there's still a lot of possibilities at this point. It is still possible that the storm comes right up to the coast in Florida. We could still be looking at direct impacts. It is certainly possible that we could be looking at a landfall in South Carolina and North Carolina. It's also possible that we see a track that is just offshore, in which case we can see substantial indirect impacts. Even if that core is offshore, we can still be looking at serious wave action and surge and heavy rain affecting uh, parts of the coastline. And it is also possible that the storm uh, stays rather far offshore and in fact begins to turn uh, fairly soon here uh, even potentially before it actually makes it to the Bahamas, but uh, I don't want to count on that by any means because we could be talking about a devastating blow coming in here to the Bahamas in the next day. This is such a powerful storm, such a well-formed storm. You can see the eye very clearly here, the stadium effect as we call it. More shadows showing up there on the western side of the eye wall as the sun is getting lower in the sky. And this, the core of the storm now, the most dangerous part of the storm, now about 170 miles from Great Abaco Island. That is right there. And then also you've got Grand Bahama Island in here and then Eleuthera in here. It looks like Great Abaco could take the brunt of the storm, as could Grand Bahama if it takes a little bit longer to turn. And the most uh, recent European model operational run, this is sort of the main European model, showing us the storm slowing down dramatically as it comes into Great Abaco Island tomorrow. So we'd be talking about a terrific pounding of winds over 100 miles per hour, storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. One of the worst storms that we have seen in the Bahamas, and then just slowly moving across Great Abaco and into Grand Bahama Island. But again, this all depends on when that northward turn starts to occur, and there is still this chance that it doesn't occur until later, in which case it could be very, very close to the coast there in Florida. Then the storm begins to lift up on Tuesday and going into Wednesday starts to pass Jacksonville and then by Thursday perhaps getting close to South Carolina and North Carolina. So again, there is this uh, very significant potential for direct impacts in South Carolina and North Carolina. So anywhere from Charleston up into Myrtle Beach into Wilmington and the Outer Banks, you folks need to be prepared for the possibility of a hurricane landfall. It's also possible that it remains offshore, but we certainly could be looking at some uh, direct impacts as well, Julie. Just a you know a terrific amount of uncertainty with the storm. It's been that way all along because the steering flow has been so light. The features that are driving the storm are just uh, you know very large and kind of amorphous. It's a very weak flow in between these two areas of high pressure. And one thing we do know, it's a very strong storm, and there's really not a lot in its path that's going to cause it to weaken at least not in the near yeah. term. So uh, again, very concerning, especially for the Bahamas right now. Here's what we know right now. Hurricane warnings have been posted for the Northwestern Bahamas, including Nassau. Evacuations have now begun in the Bahamas and most major resorts there are closed. Remaining tourists are being sent to shelters at schools, churches, and government buildings. Mandatory evacuations for Brevard County, Florida will start at eight tomorrow morning. And South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster has declared a state of emergency ahead of Dorian. The declaration allows state and local emergency agencies to start staging along Okay, the so there you have it. That's the Weather Channel, what they had to say. Uh, if you look here, here's our rainfall potential. It looks like we're about one to two inches. And I was hoping that I'd be able to stop making these because it'd go away, but technically we haven't gotten the all clear yet. Uh, it's still, you know, it still looks like it's coming this way, so it's not time to let our guards down. Right now here at the home front, we're waiting for my mom and dad to come visit. 
or doing laundry. If you're new at this, dealing with hurricanes, you always want to do laundry before it gets here. Uh, that way you have clothes available because you won't be able to wash them because electricity will most likely be off and water may be bad. So there's a little tip for you, some insight again. Um, on day number two, which is actually day number three, still a lot of gas outages. Uh, still, um, from what I heard, Publix is doing fine. Over on the East Coast, the gas is starting to come back. Orlando is starting to come back, uh, which is good. That's how you prioritize it. You get the gas to where it needs to go to first and go down the list from there. Uh, so, so far, it's all good news, but it looks like I might have to do this again tomorrow. Um, you know, we don't stop worrying about it until it's far away from us. Uh, so, you know, a little good news, a little bad news. Like I said, I really don't want to have to do an aftermath video or go out in the rain video. That's not fun. Um, following, you're going to see our afternoon storm that I recorded yesterday. So that way, if we do get a little remnants of this, you can sort of do a comparison of what we deal with every day from our subtropical thunderstorms to the thunderstorms and rainstorms that a hurricane can bring. Uh, and you'll see that usually our afternoon thunderstorms can be pretty intense. So here's that. Right okay, there. here we go. An afternoon thunderstorm is here. Ugh. Sort of give you a baseline for what we're used to on a daily basis. The backyard as well. And some near whiteout conditions going on. Gotta love to feel that energy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, that was pretty intense. We had some whiteout, uh, thunder. I don't know if I got the lightning, but there was some lightning. It was pretty, in, you know, a pretty intense little storm. Uh, here's our cone of uncertainty, as we like to call it. Uh, yeah, it's taking it right up to the east. It looks like that high front, or that high that was up here, went ahead and got pushed away by a low front that was moving across the northern United States. So this is a lot of good news. Uh, I'm not going to get too optimistic because it can change in a moment. We learned that with Wilma, Charlie, Irma. These tracks can always change overnight, even the last, even within a reading from my hurricane hunter. So, you know, we're still on guard. Um, so next you're gonna see, I did decide not to do the walk today. I'm just gonna show you the backyard, how beautiful and sunny it was. There's no no deterioration of weather. It shouldn't be, the hurricane's a long ways away yet. Right now, the main concern is the Bahamas. These folks are gonna get hit pretty hard and it's directly in their cone. So we're all doing a little prayer for them. Maybe we can move it again like we did for Puerto Rico. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the backyard. Be right back. All right, so here we are, day two. I decided we're going to go ahead and just show you out in the backyard. It's a beautiful day here. Everything's good. Um, I said not to do the walk today because, we don't, you know, yesterday was a ridiculously long video, an hour. So... As you see, it's gorgeous, nice and sunny, a little breezy, and happy to be in Southwest Florida. All right, so as promised, it's a beautiful. It was a beautiful morning. Weather is perfect. Really, and ready for a, a storm right now. I think for this afternoon. Speaking of storm, I wish Home Girl was here right now to take away this hurricane for us. She could do it. She'd destroy that thing. Um, but for now, we'll just settle for this great fan art that I found online. Isn't this beautiful? I've used this before um, in our Instagram. I posted it because I just thought it was a real nice representation of her. I like her in all the white and all the lightning around her. So just wanted to use that to close with. Thanks for watching again. Thank you for all the great responses yesterday. Um, we're doing really good. We got food. We got water. We got relatives coming to stay. Getting the laundry done. So I'll most likely see you tomorrow unless something major happens tonight. I doubt it will. If something happens, we'll get back on again. So if you've subscribed, thank you so much. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, if you're new, please subscribe and um, like. Make sure you share. We are mostly about comics, but this is a special report. 
You know, this just has to do with my day by day. Maybe tomorrow, if it's you know, if it's, I get a little quiet time, <laughs> um, maybe we'll go over some comics and how to stir your comics during a storm. Uh, so that's all. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend or have a great night. Bye.